Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL K6 which is the side 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 theorem of congruence within the coordinate plane. Okay so these are a series of problems that give you a graph and they give you two triangles on the graph that are going to be uh, either congruent or non-congruent. You're going to decide which it is. And so they really want you to focus on side 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 uh, uh, the side 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 theorem here and so what you would have to do in theory is to basically count the units here or get the lengths of each of the sides and compare them and make sure they are the same okay now I'm gonna tell you a secret here um, even though they want you to focus on side 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 well looking at some triangles like this one you can see that you can use side angle side or side angle side because in order to find the length of this one, you're either going to have to use the distance formula or you're going to have to use Pythagorean's theorem after you figure out these two sides. Either way, whatever you want to do. So what we'll do is we'll count the sides. And so SU is going to start at 1, go up to 10. So that's going to be 9 right here. Okay, let's see how that compares. Um, it looks like this one, we go from negative 10 to 0. So that is going to be 10. So already, we're probably not going to be congruent, but let's count the other sides just in case. So we have negative 9 here and a positive 2 here, which is 11. So that's the length of 11. So we have 9, 10 down here, and 11. So clearly, those cannot match up. They are not congruent. They are not the same length, right? They're not identical sides, so not going to be congruent. OK. Are these congruent? Well. Already it kind of looks like they're not, but let's do the counting just in case. So we start at negative 1 and go down to negative 10, so that's going to be 9. And then we start here at negative 8 and go to positive 4, and that's going to be 12. So we have 9 and uh, 12, okay? And if we go over here, we start at 10 and end up at 1, that's going to be 9. That's a good sign. And then 8 to negative 4 is 12. Okay, so we do have 9, 12, and 9, and 12. So that is good. Okay. And again, um, with side, 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 you have to figure out the length of the other side too. But because you know this is a 90 degree angle right here, 90 degree angle, because they're perpendicular, right? Uh, you can just kind of know side, angle, side is going to apply here and prove they are indeed going to be congruent. Okay, so you get the idea. You want to count the sides, count the sides, and if they match up, they're congruent. If they do not match up, they're not congruent. And so I'm going to skip. Okay, this is where it gets unfortunate because they only give you one side you can count here, and then these other two sides um, are, are not vertical or horizontal, meaning you'd have to use the distance formula to find them. Okay, so we can do that. It'll just take a little bit of time. All right. Uh, so first, let us count just to even see if these are going to be the same. So we have start at 10, go down to negative 1. So that's going to be 11. And this one here is at 10 and goes to, ne to positive 1. So negative 10 to positive 1, that's also 11. Good. So we'll say this is congruent with this. I just put a tick mark there. Okay, so now let's use some distance formula. So we will go, uh, let's see, the distance formula is the square root of x2 minus x1 all squared plus y2 minus y1 all squared. And I'm going to mark h down here as negative 10 comma negative 7 and I will mark i up here as negative 5 comma negative 1 and we will plug these in uh, as such so I'll make this our first coordinate and this our second coordinate okay so d equals the square root of x2 is going to be negative 5 uh, minus x1, which is going to be negative 10. So minus a negative 10, all squared, plus y2 is going to be negative 1, 
minus uh, negative 7 all squared. Okay, negative 5 minus a negative 10 is just saying negative 5 plus 10. So negative 5 plus 10 is 5 squared plus negative 1 minus a negative 7 is negative 1 plus 7. So that's going to be 6 and then 6 squared. All right, so that's going to be the square root of 25 plus 36, which is the square root of 61. So I'm going to leave that as the square root of 61. Okay, now let us compare uh, one of the sides up here the same way. Uh, A is going to be at uh, 3 comma 10 and B is going to be at uh, 10 comma 5. So I'll make this number 1 and this number 2. Okay, so let's see. I'll scroll down a little bit. We'll go down here. Okay, so we'll do D equals x2 is going to be 10 minus x1, which is 3 squared, then do plus uh, y2, which is 5, and then minus y1, which is 10 squared. All right, so that simplifies to 7 squared plus negative 5 squared, or just 5 squared, it doesn't matter, but I'll write negative 5 squared. So that leads us to 49 plus negative 5 squared or negative 5 times negative 5 is just 25. All right, add them together, that is going to be 74, the square root of 74. So this side is going to be the square root of 74. Okay, so it is already not looking great for us. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the length of just one last side. And I will, let's see, I will, um, I will go down back here to the blue triangle and say point J is at 1 comma negative 7. And I'll say this is my first point. And then we want to find the last remaining length here. Um, so we'll make uh, I our second point again. And so I'm going to scroll down yet again make more room. And now I'm going to put it right here. So we'll do d equals the square root of x2 is going to be negative 5 minus x1 which is 1 squared plus y2 is negative 1 minus y1 is negative 7 so minus a negative 7 squared. Okay Negative 5 minus 1 is just negative 6, so negative 6 squared plus negative 1 minus a negative 7 is negative 1 plus 7, so that's going to be 6, and then squared. Okay, so we factor that out. It's going to be 36 plus 36, which equals the square root of 72. So square root of 72. So is there any chance that these triangles match up? Are they going to be congruent? Well, we know one of the sides is the square root of 74 up here, and none of these sides are the square root of 74, meaning there's at least one side that's not matching up, meaning they are definitely not going to be congruent. Okay, so that's going to be a big no for me. Good. Okay, and so uh, if you have other sides, like in this picture, that are not going to be straight, Likely you have one horizontal one here and one vertical one here that probably correspond, but you have to test the other two. Then you're going to have to use the distance formula to confirm. Okay, Ooh. all three here are going to have to use the distance formula. Unfortunate. And I believe that's going to be the end. Let's see. Um, at 90 it says uh, they give you vertices, so they give you points. You got to plot the points. And then you got to determine if they're congruent. So they make you do the work of plotting the triangles first, which is unfortunate, but you got to do it. Okay. Either way, that is where I'm going to end the video. So study hard and stay safe, and I will catch you for the 
next IXL tutorial video. Goodbye.